And good day to you. So today I'm looking at doing a model on ARIMA and SARIMA uh, time series analysis. We've got the uh, Kaggle data for uh, World Bank uh, India growth data. You can see the years is 1991-2016. I'm going to be trying to predict the GDP uh, IND which as I said previously, I'm not quite sure if it's for individuals or GDP India, but um, it's a nice squiggly time series line, which um, if you've never been introduced to the ARIMA method before, you probably think is pretty hard to predict that. And if you've looked at the autocorrelation function uh, video previously, you're probably aware of some of the traps that can occur with time series analysis because of random shocks the data can leave leave data spiraling into uh, into different different behaviors uh, let's say um, I recommend looking that if you if you're interested now what I'm going to show is oh and um, by the way, you need to bring in the library for forecast. That's Foxtrot, Oscar, Romeo, Echo, Charlie, Alpha, Sierra, Tango. Uh, my first point of call is just to show you the function for ARIMA. Uh, same, same, as a, um, same as a linear regression. You can just put in the data and tell it what to predict. And it builds a model. Now, I want to show you first thing why this doesn't produce a good model and why you need to do a little bit of data analysis uh, to get this done and if you see you can use it use a normal prediction function used for linear regression but as you see jumping up and down this data just produce a straight line because that's the trend line so your normal Excel methods don't work here because it, your, your trends just a straight line down the middle and it might be a little bit upward movement but actually it's it, this is this is just utterly wrong because if you went and looked at the last four years of India I bet you would see that it came out and went upwards quite a bit so how do we make something a bit more black magic predictive well i'm going to paste this in first so you can see here i'm doing the same thing again but i'm using the other optional inputs to the arima function i'm calling order and order is takes two three values p d and q P stands for the number of autoregressive terms. And so where this comes in is ARIMA actually stands for autoregressive integrated moving average. So the, the, the first bit, the autoregressive part, takes a couple of values of in the time series previously back and does a regression on them to work out uh, how much of a value should uh, it predict for the, the next value. Uh, D denotes the number of differences needed to make the time series stationary. Now, as we've said, this is a squiggly line. That is the mean. The mean over this whole data is constantly changing. It's constantly moving around. And so if you plot it, you'll get a nice straight line. Or, you, or if you're lucky, you might get a slight trend going up. But you won't get the zigzags of a prediction of next year events you won't have an idea of what's coming so that's kind of useless the first method of removing that level of variance out is differencing now in simple terms what differencing is is I take this year's value and minus last year's value um, of it to work out the difference and therefore we turn this value much more into what we saw with the autocorrelation function which you 
get here. And previously, when we did the autocorrelation function, we looked for randomness. So pre when what we saw last time was um, the values just were high, and they were they 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 were all going up for the one function the one function we looked at. But there wasn't any pattern to uh, the autocorrelation function. You can see here there is some sort of pattern. There's a four-year pattern of going up or down and then switching around and changing direction. So using that with the autocorrelation function to see what the data is doing then gives us uh, an insight into that there is a cycle going on which is what we talk about as a seasonal arena or the serema um, which if I go back to my state or input that's that um, so I'm trying to do a value of 8 there and I'm using setting the P autoaggressive turn for the last value i.e. I'm forecasting next year with um, last year's value plus a seasonal uh, representation of the data by 8 the last value here, last zero in that order bit, is the Q, which represents the moving average of the previous forecast errors in our model. So that's saying, if I go back a bit, that I'm creating a mean of so many values of the previous years to work out a general direction of which the model's going. Now, if you combine that all together and you plot it, and I've missed the plot. You get this. And if you went and looked at India's data, you would see that it did, it did rebound, but it didn't rebound all the way up to its high here. And you can think about that as there is a general regression to the mean in most, mo mo most models. Though you're probably thinking that we can do better, as we always can do. So changing the seasonality changes the model. And that introduces something that I find a little bit worrying with these ARIMA models because I do think they're a little bit of black magic. Um, they do do a better job of predicting values than what me or you could do with, in an Excel spreadsheet. But believing that they're real and have obligatory power to managers and the like is a bit scary because just because the, the this um this data rebound doesn't mean um doesn't mean anything <laughs> to the person on the on the on the ground but it might help him knowing or her knowing that there's this is the direction of travel that's going back up we think we've hit, hit hit rock bottom based on the previous cycles in the data, and we can sort of say, well, maybe this is what if we're really lucky we'll get. This is probable. This is if we're unlucky, if it's a slow recovery. And hopefully that might be useful for some people. Now, one last bit. Um, I played around with different models and I need to do some more researching on how to find the best model but this is the sort of danger point to explain with ARIMA models you can do weird combinations of values and get predictions which look like this which are basically 
they're, they're the same as the mean value that we produce first time without putting any work into it. And but you can also it's also bear, worth bearing in mind things like this and then just increasing this, this first value makes it ever more squiggly and I think your best model is that two one but that but there this is where it's the black magic problem of which model is the best it is sometimes hard to to work out and there are methods and I need to do more research to understand those methods but I I sort of came away from doing this week's work and going that's great but how do I explain that to somebody that's never seen that before and expect it to them to understand it and consider it important to you know use and and treat as a uh, a general prediction of how well they were doing in the ne in the coming year or the coming months and i think that's the hard part of these things that a very ingenious model can predict the future potentially and because of that it has huge value but working out which model is the right prediction of the future is difficult and then getting people to realize that that piece of analysis is the correct analysis and not so, not another model is even difficulter so that's my thought of the day um, I hope it makes you think of using a reamer in your day-to-day -day, uh, processes you know at least you could sort of sit down with an expert in the field throw together a few graphs and run through with them and find the one which you think is the the most correct prediction for the future and maybe that you find some usefulness for you your manager uh, your, your country your your situation so thanks and have a good day